this is JC Sutherland, Product Manager for M Audio. And what I'm going to show you in this video is how to set up the Trigger Finger Pro with Ableton Live. This is assuming that you already have Arsenal set up and that you've already scanned all of your VSTs. If you haven't done that yet, please look at the Arsenal tutorial and we'll show you how to do that. What we have right here is the Trigger Finger Pro in its factory default state, which is the preset for Arsenal and a sequence for Verse. What I'm first going to do is I'm going to load up the preset for Live and Arsenal. And what this does is this actually has the setup for Mac control and Arsenal control in kind of a general way. I'll show you later in the video how to set it up specifically if you want to do different banks or whether you want your knobs, faders, or buttons in Mac control or Arsenal control because you have basically the choice to do anything. It's that flexible. So I'm going to go over to Live and make sure all the preferences are right. In Live, make sure your audio preferences are already set up for whatever audio device you have. So on Mac, Core Audio, on PC, make it set, set up for your ASIO device. If you don't have an ASIO device on your PC, you're probably going to have pretty brutal uh, latency when you're playing drums. So you do want to set it up for an ASIO device. In the MIDI sync window under Control Surfaces, go down and find Mackie Control. And make sure that your input is set for Trigger Finger Pro Mackie and your output is set for Trigger Finger Pro Mackie. You'll notice if you are doing a PC, you will not see the third port, which is the Trigger Finger Pro Arsenal port, because the, the Windows driver actually hides that port. Down on the MIDI ports window, you're gonna to wanna to enable for a Trigger Finger Pro MIDI track, for input uh, Trigger Finger Mackie control input, for sync and remote, as well as track, on an output, it's pretty much the same setup. So MIDI output and the outputs for Mac and Control. So what we've done this right now is set this up so the Mac and Control will communicate with Ableton Live and also we'll be able to sync the hardware to Ableton Live, which is important because you'll notice when I get further on this DAW Control cluster, you can actually clip launch in Ableton Live. So you'll want your sequencer and any clips that you're launching in Ableton Live to all be synced to the same clock. So to do that in the hardware right now, I'm going to exit out of this window and go to Preferences and make sure that my clock is set to External. I'm going to load up an empty sequence right now. But you'll notice when I hit Play here, the Transport in Ableton Live will also start going. So now we're going to go actually into the Control UI focus to show you what each one of these are doing. And first, I'm going to load up an instance of Arsenal. So we'll have an, an instantiation of Arsenal to communicate with. And I'll load up the room kit. OK, we should be good to go there. I'll close that down. So I'm going to go into the control UI focus on the hardware. And right now, I'm going to scroll up. So I'm looking at knobs. Right now, bank A is set to Arsenal mode. And how I can change that is on the mapping button, Right now, it's set for bank A to be Arsenal, bank B to be Mackie, bank C, Arsenal, bank D, Mackie. I'm going to toggle all right now to Mackie control mode just to show you what you can do in Mackie control mode. So right now, they're all Mackie. I hit exit, and bank A, you'll notice now the knobs are assigned to the virtual pots. And I'm doing with pans right here. So how to change what the knobs are doing, however, I can hit assign, and I can choose basically plug in EQ instrument or scroll over and choose pan sender track so then with these knobs I control any of those parameters in Ableton. Hit exit out of that and this tracks button right here because you will notice that uh, normal Mac control is in banks of eight. So because only I have four right here to see the other eight I hit that and it'll show me the next bank of eight and if I have a session that has more tracks than eight you can hit that button and scroll over and bank over that way. So I'll go back to one to four. And now I'm going to change the control type, so I'll be looking at faders. Now the faders are still in the mapping, are still set to Arsenal, Mackie, Arsenal, Mackie, because each one of these are independently set. So if I wanted to, I could have all of my knobs controlling Arsenal, all of my faders controlling Mackie, or all of my buttons set to a MIDI mode, sending you know uh, uh, min-max values to a synth out of the MIDI outport or any one specific if I have a plugin that I really like doing like, you know, toggle MIDI in and out. I can set that up manually if I'd like. So I'm going to do the same thing here that I did previously and toggle these all to Mackie, exit. And now you'll see it's showing fader volumes. 
and it will refresh what's going on in the hardware. So if I'm choosing the fader in the software, you'll see the UI corresponds to that. These don't have flying faders, but they will catch up. So if this is down here and I want to go, I have to go grab where the volume is in the DAW and it'll catch up. And now I'm going to scroll down to, nah, I mean, sorry, back to buttons. And this is showing what the buttons are because the buttons right now, it's like before, are going to be bank one arsenal. So if I control, you'll see that I'll be going through the different ones. But I'm going to go back and do the same thing I did previously. And I'm mapping and toggle all to Mackie mode. Hit exit, so I'm in bank one looking at the buttons in Mackie mode. And the function right now is set to mute. So I can mute my tracks there. If I want to change the function, I can just toggle through these between V-select, mute, solo, track select, and record arm. If I go further down to the advanced section, this is where you set what your transport is set to and your cursor knob is set to. So the cursor goes between Huey and Mackie. Most DAWs will use Mac. If your Pro Tools user, you'll set this for Huey. And the transport, you have a bunch of different options. MMC, MMC plus machine control, MIDI CC, Mackie, et cetera. I would set to Mackie right now just because that's the simplest to set up. And like I said, showed you earlier, when I hit play, it hits play in the DAW, and the DAW is then telling the transport and locking the clock in the actual trigger finger. To show you how that works really quick, I'm gonna set up a sequence for a one bar loop turn on the metronome and live and just put down a four on the floor so you can just see how this is synced. And I can increase the tempo and live. The Trigger Finger Pro follows along. You'll notice I can scroll around in here. So I've had clips on these other tracks with the DAW. I could launch them and kill different. So you can do a lot of clip launching along with doing any sequencing that you have on the device. So to really with next sequence mode and some of the advanced features in here you'll see in other videos, everything will be linked up very nicely and you can use this as a very powerful, not only production tool, but a live instrument.